Want to increase the value of your property without spending a ton of cash? Renovator and buyer's agent Michelle Lewis shares her three reno hacks on how to increase value for sometimes cents on the dollar. If you're enjoying the content here and want even better videos, make sure to follow and subscribe to the channel. And now let's jump into the chat with Michelle Lewis. Michelle Lewis, it's time to talk savings. How are you going? Yeah, good, Todd. Uh, I got to say, renovation, love it. The, the prices that you buy things for, it blows my mind. And I like to think I'm pretty good at controlling budgets. My, mm -hmm. my wife and I both love a bargain. You take it to this next level. And that's why I was really excited to actually open up this subject with you because I think if this is even one of the things people take away, if they're trying to add value to a property, they're potentially going to increase their profit quite a bit. Yeah. So do you mind, actually, before we jump into list, is there anything you kind of wanted to set the stage with with this before? Yeah, I love when I show people my renos and I ask them, what do you think I paid for that? And they comment in the thousands. And of course, I've bought it for a small amount or even got it off the side of the road for free. That's some of my favourites. <laughs> <laughs> and when, when you picture that, naturally, everyone listening right now is probably picturing some beat up old something or other. But it's like you're talking about stuff that might have a scratch and a ding in it. And yeah. it's like a little bit of a fixer upper, but otherwise it's it's good. Yeah. Most people live in unrenovated homes with things that are scratched. And so when you're renovating, perfectionism is not what we aim to achieve. It's a safe, clean, neat home made of upcycled gear. Love it. Let's kick it off then. What mm -hmm. is the first thing on the list that people need to be looking for as far as the upcycling side of things to really increase that profit margin? Secondhand kitchens. Every day of the week on Facebook Marketplace or Gumtree, you can buy a kitchen for under a thousand bucks. Most of our renos have um, kitchens in this price range and you repurpose it creatively to go into a new space. Kitchen carcasses are generally the same dimensions and mm -hmm. so creatively you can work with mostly the second-hand kitchen and sometimes you might buy a little bit of extra cabinetry to make it work. Saves you thousands. Okay, so you might get a kitchen and look at it and go, okay, well, the cupboards look ugly, but it's like a standard kind of, I don't know, let's just say caboodle because the first thing that comes to mind, Yeah. the actual cabinets. So don't worry about the cupboard doors. We'll get new cupboard doors, but we'll use all of this old secondhand no, cabinetry. Is that what you mean? The or? kitchens I'm buying aren't ugly. They're often less than 10 years old. They're white. I typically go for white kitchens. Yeah. So they're not ugly at all and they're all under a grand every day of the week. How, okay, how often are you looking to find this kind of stuff? Is this well, like a side I'm, addiction on Marketplace? Like <laughs> it's an addiction when I'm renovating, yes. Yeah. So um, you, you have to keep an eye out and, and look for them and know where to look. There's tips such as looking at um, demolition sales, having a look at the kitchen. They might not say Good it's idea. a kitchen in there, but you can find them in there. Um, lots of developers that are knocking down houses are knocking out perfectly good kitchens. Um, so you need to search there as well. Excellent. Okay. Mm -hmm. So first of all, we're looking at kitchens. We're not talking about ugly things that are 20 no. years old going, this is a freebie. You're talking no. about still good looking kitchens. Yeah. Okay. Love it. Um, and if we're talking about around a thousand dollars or under, mm -hmm. that's a huge saving straight yeah. there. So the last kitchen we took out was $950. It's a 15 year old kitchen with a, a granite bench top. The owners said they paid 15 K for it. So I picked it up for, um, and I'll actually make a profit on this kitchen because I will sell off the um, sink tap, the mixer and certain things. So I, it potentially comes down to only a few hundred dollars. That's insane. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and well, for me, it's yes, it's about the bargain, but it's about keeping things out of landfill, right? Well, and that's the thing that I like about this, that it's not just the profit side. Like mm. you, it, you're actually doing something good for the environment yes. as well. I hate the idea of building materials going into landfill. So uh, it's a passion. Yeah. Win-win. Yeah, win-win. What's number two on the list? Okay. So I'm going to go with the paint secret. So um, a long time ago, I learned the strategy of collecting. Uh, well, you can, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can go to your paint shop and say, hey, what have you got out the back that's mistinted uh -huh. um, or dented tins? And you'll pay a fraction of the price that you'll pay for full price. You can also purchase from people who've got leftovers from their renovation. So it saves hundreds of dollars. You can actually mix light colored, similar type of paint. So you don't want to mix different types of paint, but similar type of paint. And you can actually color it to your liking. Okay. So the first thing that comes to mind is there's someone listening going, yeah, cool. I'll save some money, but then I'm going to have a patchwork quilt colored house. Like what, how are you tinting everything the so same? Your painters will do it for you. So they'll, they'll have tints um, that they can. So for example, if you've got a whole lot of light colored paints yep. that might be for um, painting the external part of your house, they can make it into like a coffee cream color, which we did on a project and they just 
put it all in a big barrel. You can just buy them from Bunnings and you make your own colour and it's just a, it saves you hundreds of dollars. And so this is really tight up <laughs> stuff. <laughs> but, but it all adds up because it if you're does. making a thousand decisions over the course of a reno, yeah. which you're probably literally making yes, a thousand. Yes, you are. Like you, you, you're saving a bit of money on all of them and in some cases what you're talking about, a lot of money on all these decisions, yeah. it's a huge amount in the end. It is. But you're not talking about just getting this off Marketplace. Like you said to actually go to the paint shops yeah. and ask for this. Yeah, you can go to the paint shops and just say, hey, what have you got out the back that's mistinted uh, or dented? They're not allowed to sell the dented cans. And they'll say, hey, yeah, I've got the – you'd be surprised. I was surprised when I did it. I was surprised. It was relatively easy. I wasn't searching for days and hours. I just went to a couple of paint shops and they had all this paint out the back. So just ask the question. What's wrong with a dented can? Well, I guess you can't pay full price. You can't charge full price for a dented – uh, tin and so yeah that's what you do is the paint dented inside <laughs> <No>. <laughs> of course not <laughs> but yeah the key is finding those light colors because obviously you can't tint darker colors but a lot gotcha. of there's a lot of light colors you can yeah and what do you reckon you'd save on that because you just gave, give an example of a kitchen that was worth 15 grand brand new you got it for 950 probably going to come down to a few hundred once you strip off a few of the mm. items you don't need what are we talking about savings wise on this yeah, so you'll easily save a few hundred dollars if not into the thousands depending on how much paint you need if you're painting inside and out. And, you know, for a lot of people, like, they can't be bothered. They don't want to do that. I just happen to love it. I have a passion for it. <laughs> it's um, what gets me up in the morning. That sounds really sad, doesn't it? <laughs> but for oh. me, it's it's a good thing. I love I love it. If it's sad, it's sad that I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a beautiful thing. There's, yeah. there's something fun about getting a bargain. And there's this. Yeah. I, I feel that this is going to be something that never leaves either of us because no. I've got a few friends in the industry now that are worth tens of millions and I can chat with them about still getting the peanut butter on special when they're doing <laughs> their shopping. It's like uh, it's, it just becomes a part of you. It's actually a trait in on, entrepreneurs as well. I mean, you look at Ikea and, you know, he was never an extravagant Absolutely. huge spender. So there's, there's a lot of psychology to it as well. Apparently, fun fact, you know what Ikea stands for? Um, I can't remember. Uh, no. Ingva Kamprad Altari Laganari, which is the, his name, the village he grew up in and the town it was in. Ah. Apparently, I don't know if this is true, but it was rumoured that even when he was like a multi-billionaire, he used to wait for the local markets to close so he could go in yep. and negotiate a better price. <laughs> it's like, dude, you can it. buy the whole market, <laughs> but it doesn't I love matter. It. Yeah, and and I know people like that. They they're not driving the fancy cars. It's not a priority. It's um. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. Absolutely. Mm. And the third and final one on the list. So we've got kitchens, paint. What's our last one? So I, let's go with bathrooms. So similar concept to the kitchen for this uh, Renault down south in Adelaide that I did. Um, that was a $600 wall hung white vanity that I picked up off Gumtree for $100. So um, it's not always about having your perfect vanity of what you want in mind. It's finding something that's a good price um, and can you use it and is it going to have longevity of style? And, of course, white's always good in the long term. So, you know, that's an easy 500 bucks saving there. And if you multiply that by everything you buy – you know, another point in the bathrooms would be um, seconds tiles that are slightly irregular shaped, you know, buying them um, between, you know, around the $20 a square metre versus mm -hmm. 40, 50, 60. That's where people's budgets blow out. And when you're saying slightly irregular shaped, mm -hmm. like, so you're talking, you, you go into the tile shop or you go into Bunno's. And you're saying like what seconds do you have? Same as the paint or? So I typically go to Beaumont's out the back. They have um, one here in Adelaide has a whole heap of stuff out the back um, for whatever reason. It's not fit for front of showroom, mm -hmm. um, fit for back of showroom. Perfect. I'll, I'll find what I need in there and just work with, again, those neutral colours that work over time. Something that's just popped to mind is like if you're making this work in Adelaide, what do we got? One point something million people here. Yeah. If you're in Queensland, you're in Sydney, Melbourne, you're in somewhere that's got a higher population, the mm. likelihood of more options yeah. is going to be through the roof. Yes. So just in case you've been listening to this going, oh, there's not going to be that much. If Michelle's pulling this off in Adelaide, yeah. like this is going to be even, even easier. I don't want to say it's easy to do, but the likelihood of actually finding a good deal is going to be greater. Yeah, uh, possibly. Yeah, absolutely. It's possible anywhere. It's just if you've got that inclination. Some people hate the idea of buying secondhand or upcycling things and it's not their thing and that's fine. But if it's a passion for you, it works really well. 
and so, saves you a lot of money. So you driving around in like a Ute or something? Or <laughs> like I have a trailer. We bought a trailer. We a invested trailer? in a yep. trailer a few years ago. Um, husband also does have a, a Ute. We can use. Um, and I was actually devastated when I moved from the Kluger to um, my current car because it's a lot smaller and I can't just throw things in the back of it. But um, we make it work. Yeah. All right, I love this, Michelle. So we've got bathrooms looking at every well, basically everything is either secondhand, scratch mm -hmm. and dent, just anything that someone looks at and goes, Oh, there's a big problem. You kind of isolate it and go, Well, maybe there's a little one that I can solve, but there's a big saving. Yes. And to kind of round this out, big savings wise, because it's probably easy to go, Yeah, all right, she saved five hundred bucks there, saved a thousand dollars there. Adding this all up, what do you reckon this is like probably putting back into your pocket at the end of a renter? End of a renter, I should say. Yeah, so I would say I spend half as much as most people using these formulas of um, upcycling products. So let's say if someone's doing a 200k reno, it's going to cost me 100. Um, so that's the general rule of thumb, I, I would think. Um, half as much? Yeah. I feel like I should have spat out my drink for dramatic effect then. <laughs> you should have. <laughs> that's nuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. But because the concepts overflow into using your trades, you pay them well, but you're not paying the top dollar. So you, everything's relative. And that's how we save money. And, and on the time side of things, this is something that you're mostly just doing like spare time. What would you say? It's an extra hour a day, hour and a yeah, so I guess at, for this particular, well, in Renault's in general, if it's close to home, I'm there every day. Um, if it's further from home, it's a once a week visit, mm -hmm. but it's project managing from afar. So yeah, look, yes, I reckon you could go with an hour a day, even less sometimes. It's the initial part of a project, there's intensive input, and then yep. as things go along, it settles down. So as far as like even a time side of things, because I always just like to think of what's the objection someone could go, yeah, but... And that's the yeah, but that comes to mind. Yeah, but you're going to spend a lot more time. If you were to actually put your savings against the extra hours, you'd be on a phenomenal hourly rate. Yes, yes. So it's a matter of prioritising your time. So, um, you know, we've always loved the Renaults. Um, We do it, we love it, but we do make sacrifices. Yeah. The thing that I like about this is whether you're renovating a property like entirely or whether you're just doing a little bit of a cosmetic upgrade, mm -hmm. This is something that you can also pick and choose. Whether you maybe only do like 10% of it, the way that Michelle's describing now, why not? Save some money. Whether you can do 100% of it or 1%, or either way, it's irrelevant. The fact is, if it's an option for as much as possible, why not? It's going to yeah. save money. And what I love is it's affordable for everyone. So if you are a single mum or a single dad um, and you don't have huge budgets, you can the budget reno method, the upcycling method, the off the side of the road method, it works. And you can do it no matter what your income is. So you've got that possibility of gaining income and equity in a home or even a rental if you want to improve your rental for mm. your landlord, start somewhere and get going. Yeah, if you think of it that way, that if you've just got a rental – and it's something that you're looking at going, oh, I don't want to renovate it and spend 20 grand on like a basic cosmetic. Yes. Uh, but if I did, I'd probably get an extra hundred bucks a week. If you were doing it this way and you're like, well, maybe if it's only going to cost me 10, that works now. Now we're talking about a, what is that? 50% ROI. Yeah. And if you are a renter, you can actually negotiate with your landlord to practice some skills of renovating by doing it on their actual home. And maybe they'll fund the reno they'll fund the renovation. Um, and obviously it's a benefit to them. It's a benefit to you and you're building your skill set. So that's some way that I'll encur encourage people who think they can't afford it. What about if you get your landlord to fund your own property and you're seen as a wonderful tenant because you're going to make improvements to it? There is a lot of positive options here, but are there any <laughs> final words of wisdom that you'd like to leave everyone with today? Wow, that's such a big question. Um, if you don't know what to do, learn how to do it. Follow someone who's done it before. Get those basic skills. And sometimes you have to take the action and learn as you go along, but learn from those who have been there before. Love it. Michelle Lewis from Michelle Lewis Property. Thank you so much for jumping on the show for a slice. Loved it, loved it. Thanks, Todd.